Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman. And this is the Lord's Feedback Guide Live. So, sometimes folks say that Lutherans talk about baptism too much. I say, maybe they're not talking about it enough. What? Really, though, there, there's lots of cute ways to try and diminish baptism. You can point out somebody who was baptized, who then left the faith and went on to do really terrible things afterward. You can act like a Lutheran is choosing baptism rather than Jesus over Jesus, more important than Jesus in sort of like an idolatry kind of way. But, like, I don't get it. It's not like the act itself is all that impressive. So why does everyone try so hard to demean something that already looks so lowly? Because if baptism really is nothing, like they say, why does it matter whether or not we baptize babies? Or remember it with the sign of the cross? Or open every divine service in an invocation in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the words in which we are baptized into? The real issues don't always seem to be with the sacrament, though. They almost always seem to be with the person receiving it in the first place. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but the vibe that I get is that they believe that if your heart was in the right place, you'd be fine even without water. And if it isn't, no amount of water is going to fix that, even with God's word attached to it. Which is why, in the large catechism, Luther writes, For it is of the greatest importance that we esteem baptism excellent, glorious, and exalted, for which we contend and fight chiefly, because the world is now so full of sects clamoring that baptism is an external thing, and that external things are of no benefit. But let it ever be so much an external thing. Here stand God's word and command, which institute, establish, and confirm baptism. But what God institutes and commands cannot be a vain, but must be a most precious thing, though in appearance it were of less value than a straw. See, of all the accusations that get tossed our way that completely misrepresent baptism, all of it really seems to be rooted in a heart problem, which is actually where we agree. We have a heart problem. We have a sinful and rebellious heart. The biggest issue is us. So when we get all mixed up in baptism, usually the problem is that we end up thinking way too much of ourselves before we ever bother to think way too little of baptism. Everybody agrees who deals with the scriptures honestly that we have a heart problem, a sinful and rebellious heart. The real question is whether or not we think we can fix it on our own. Here's an easy test. Start real simple. Get less hungry by imagining eating a cheeseburger. See, we need help from the outside in. All the best stuff is external. Forgiveness doesn't come from inside your heart choosing to ask for it. Our hearts are the problem. The scripture says nobody seeks God, so God seeks us. Forgiveness doesn't come from your heart. It comes from your God who died on the cross for you and sent forth his Holy Spirit to you to bring you that forgiveness, to drown you in it so that you have nothing to do but receive it and then live and rejoice in it. Your religion needs to exist outside yourself if it's going to do any good at all. Really, like if I tell you that Jesus rose from the dead and you say, of course he did, and I say, well, how do you know it? And you say, well, he lives within my heart. Tell me how that fixes anything. Tell me how your heart brings anybody else you love back from the dead. I'm not trying to throw rocks. I've seen it a lot, though. The world tries. They live on in our memories, in our hearts. But that's not enough. Not really. It's not enough to reunite people cast apart by that last great enemy death. So our God gives us a physical resurrection that exists outside of your heart, that exists where Christ physically rose from the dead, where it was witnessed by 500 some odd people, where they wrote a book about it, where it is a historically verifiable fact for you. So when we talk about baptism, it needs to start there, an outside working in religion. Because you can then point me to all of the places where sinners were still sinners after they were baptized, which is why so many would mark baptism as so lowly by thinking so much of themselves. But really, the problem is still here. Like, honestly, if you thought that you could fix the whole thing by your law, by just trying harder, by working until you're not a sinner anymore, why would you ever want water that just forgives sins, that tells you that daily your sins are forgiven in this water? that tells you that forgiveness comes from the outside in, not measured in your works, but in God's grace, so that when you look at somebody who's baptized, the true mark of their being faithful is God's gift to them that forgives sins instead of them looking shiny and new. You can point me to how we supposedly choose baptism over Jesus, but here's the thing. Jesus is the one who gave us baptism. Seriously, that's like your mom hanging a picture that you drew of a cat on the fridge and then looking at that picture and saying she must love that cat more than she loves you because she didn't hang you on the fridge. Really? I mean, you know what? Maybe that cat really is 
unimpressive looking and you should learn to draw better. But here's the thing. The reason that your mom loves that picture of the cat is because you gave it to her. How much more with baptism? God commands baptism for you. That's why we love it. God gave it to us. It has to be good. God gave it. For those who realize that we of ourselves are not enough, from Jesus' own words in the Bible, from all of the painful and awful experiences that come in this world that show us that we need help, God gives it here in the waters of baptism for you. I don't care what it looks like. I care about the God who tells you to do it and promises that it helps. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, remember your baptism because it's where God saves you. 